Hello YouTube, it's your boy Dante with another graphics optimization guide. Today we are going to be looking at the game Wave Winds Meet. The reason I chose this game is because this game lets you pet a cat. So that alone makes it a game of the year contender, no? Anyway, this guide is to help you gain performance without sacrificing any noticeable visual quality. I will show you side by side comparisons of each graphic settings and the performance cost. Along with that, I will also show you my recommended settings as well. For this guide, I will be using an RTX 3060 Ti at 1080p resolution with DLAA enabled. Now with all of that out of the way, without further ado, let's do this. In graphic settings, let us first look at the settings below the visual details section. Graphics quality is just a preset selection which turns all settings below to low, medium, high or ultra like in most games. The first setting that we are gonna look at is ambient occlusion. In most games turning this to lowest quality makes you lose all depth in the game. But in this game this is not the case at all. In the low settings there is still tons of ambient occlusion applied as you can see in this room. Comparing this to high you can only see a slight shadow applied to these objects here in the back, which is barely noticeable. Here is another example of low and high, where these leaves have very soft shadow applied in high settings. Something you will never notice during normal play. Since the difference between low and high is very little, here I would recommend low ambient occlusion to gain a tiny boost in performance. Tessellation is a setting which normally adds geometric detail like rocks and bumpiness to the ground surfaces in games. But in this game, this setting seems to do nothing at all. I checked a lot of places in this game and there was no difference between high and low settings. And even the FPS was the same. In some games, tessellation also applies to characters as well. So I checked, but there was no difference to your control character or the NBC characters. So I don't know, maybe at this time, this setting could be broken and needs fixing by the developers. Still just to be on the safe side, set this to low since there is no difference in visuals anyway. Vegetation quality controls the distance at which grass is rendered. In low setting, you can see that this portion has lost all grass which is pretty far I must say. In medium setting, this portion here gets all filled up. But this section, which is barely noticeable, still has no grass. In high, the far section also gets fully filled. The ultra settings looked identical to high in all places, because this game also features heavy fog in the distance, due to which we could never see any noticeable grass patches any further. Since medium gives a pretty decent amount of grass distance coverage, and also gives some performance boost, I would recommend it here, but still if you have extra performance headroom, you can choose high as well. Next is lighting quality, which is something you will only notice when indoors as it lights up indoors areas. Here is an example of high lighting quality. When we shift to low, we lose all internal lighting and everything gets dark. Medium on the other hand looks almost identical to high. Performance wise medium was giving a light performance boost which is why I would recommend medium lighting quality. View distance control the distance at which objects are loaded in full detail. Here you can see these structures lose quality when I switch back and forth between low and ultra. When compared, Ultra of course has full coverage, but at high, the building at the far back loses detail that is visible here. Switching from high to medium, you still retain most of the detail, but this roof part here loses a little quality. Switching even further to low only has detail in this structure here, while everything else behind that loses quality. I also checked if view distance affected NPCs but they were identical on all settings. Here I would recommend high view distance 
but you can choose medium as well if you have performance issues. Effects quality like the menu says adjusts the richness in special effects. So this is another setting that has almost no visual impact when you select low compared to high. First of all, I tried comparing this particle effect over here, but it looked the same on both settings. I checked other stuff like fire and smoke effects, but there was no difference there as well. The light particles around this treasure box were also the same. The only very slight difference that I ever found was this light shaft here, which seems a little thicker in high settings. So from my testing, this setting does seem to control special effects, like the menu says. But the difference is so minimal that you will never notice in an animated effect like particles, sword slashes, fire or smoke. It can only be spotted on still effects like the light shaft, and even that is very hard to spot which is why I would recommend low effects quality. Reflection quality adds reflections to reflective surfaces like water. In this game, low setting only has basic screen space reflection, which do not apply to small puddles like these. Going to medium enables lumen reflections, which makes these puddles look good. As for larger water surfaces like these, even the low setting has basic reflections applied and there is no difference between ultra and medium. Since there is still a bit difference in performance, here I would recommend medium settings to keep the small puddles reflective. The last setting, real time sunlight only applies shadows to game depending on the direction of sunlight. Here is the difference between on and off setting, where the shadows in off setting are from a different angle because of sunlight direction. This setting only applies to outdoor areas as sunlight don't affect indoors. Performance wise, there was a 4 FPS difference, which is why I would recommend on setting, but you can choose off as well as normal shadows does not look bad to begin with. Looking at the top settings, the first one, visual style, just lets you select color tone of the game that costs no performance. Other than that, all of these are pretty basic stuff like resolution, vsync and fps limit. Motion blur again has no fps scores that only adds blur effect to moving objects in game. Here you can select your preferred upscaler, which is again a pretty straightforward setting which you should select according to your hardware. Now let's look at how much performance we gained by changing the settings. Here is the performance comparison of ultra setting versus my recommended settings. As you can see, there is almost no visual loss and we went from 63 FPS to 84 FPS at 1080p resolution with DLAA enabled. Here is the overview of all my recommended settings. And this brings us to the end of the guide. If this video was helpful to you, kindly like and support the channel by subscribing. Good luck and happy gaming.